This is Muhammad Zahid with engineering training platform. From this training platform, you will able to learn step by step PLC and to get high score in interview and certification. Hello friends, hope you are doing well. We are going to discuss about PLC input output system, digital inputs, sync and sourcing connection, digital outputs, AC and DC output signal modules, relay output signal modules, analog input, thermocouple and RTD, analog output, signal modules, status indicator. For my previous topic, the links already given in below description. Please subscribe and press the bell icon to get the further notification. Let's start from PLC input and output system. PLC IO system receives the input digital or analog signal from the various field devices and convert into logical signal used by CPU with low voltage DC signal. The CPU make decisions and execute control instruction based on its program instruction in memory. Output module convert control instruction from the CPU into digital or analog signal from the various field devices. IO system protect the internal circuit from harmful current and voltage fluctuation. Here you can see in the picture S7-1200 PLC with 1211C CPU. On the top behind of the access door, we can see the connection of 6 input and below 4 output connection. Now we will discuss about the digital inputs. Input devices are push buttons, limit switches, pressure switches, temperature switches, flow switches, level switches, proximity switches, electrical switches and so on. Some input devices use AC current and some of them DC current. The specification of each device identify the voltage and current which required by the devices. You can see here in the picture for the DC supply source and the AC supply source. Whenever we are going to connect the DC supply source, we should careful about the current flow directions. If the specification says for the positive connecting with the DC device, then we are going by that. In the next slide, I will show you the sync and source connection. I hope it will be more clarified for you. Here in the picture, you can see the PLC S7-1200 with 1211C CPU. This is the DC input signal modules with 8 input channels for the DC supply. The 4 on the top and the 4 in the bottom you can see behind the access door. And this module designed for the 24 volt DC supply. Let's start for syncing and sourcing connection. Syncing and sourcing connection identify the direction of current flow. Sync and source are term used to describe whether the positive or the negative supply is being switched. Here you can see in the picture 24 volt DC load power supply. The positive connection are going to connect with the device and the minus the other side of the device is going to connect with the modules and here from the load power supply the negative is directly is going to connect it with the modules these kind of supply we can say the sinking connections for the sourcing connection the same 24 volt DC load power supply but the current flow direction for the negative side here the one side of the device we are connecting with the negative supply. 
the other side of the device positive we are going to connect with the modules and here for the load power supply positive they are going to connect with the modules these supply known as the sourcing connection i hope it will be clarify for you the no need to be confused because this is at the time of the connection it is mentioned on the specification that the plc required the sinking connection or the sourcing connection but here is detail i hope it will be clarify for you now we will discuss about digital outputs digital output device are lights solenoid valves actuator motors starters valves and so on some output devices use dc and other output devices use ac three categories of digital output signal modules are dc modules ac modules and relay modules here you can see in the connection for the dc load power supply and ac load power supply in the previous slide we already describe about the digital input devices how they are going to connect with the cpu and now from here from cpu to digital output signal modules how they are going to connect and these are the power source from the output side you can see in the picture the ac output signal modules ac output signal modules typically operate with a load power supply of 24 volt 120 230 volt ac or may be capable of operating with either source this module use the solid state switching devices usually a trike to control each output such type of output work reliable for many ac output devices because trike allow small leakage current to flow when output is off which is not suitable for some ac devices you can see in another picture eight output signal modules four on top and four in the bottom and this is the source type of connections are shown for this module relay output signal offers the advantage of being able to work with either ac or dc devices as long as the devices operate within the modules specification and the switching speed required is not too fast as shown in the picture set of relay contact with eight relay output signal modules three above relay contacts and five below relay contacts when output is on contact will close and when output is off relay contact will be open you can see in the picture then analog input signal modules it can be operated on dc power source or ac power source this dc power source the negative supply that we are going to connecting with the device if we are going to select the ac source then on the negative side you have to connect the neutral and for the positive side here you are going to connect the line this is the analog input modules an analog input signal is generated by a sensor that provides voltage or current that can vary within the range such as 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps an analog input signal modules convert the current or voltage to a binary values that the cpu store for use in the user program the number of bits in the binary value is referred to as the channel resolution temperature measurement is an example of an application that required special signal processing two types of sensors commonly used to measure temperatures which are thermocouples and rtd rtd abbreviation is resistance temperature detectors you can see in the picture s7 1500 plc air channel 
analog input signal modules can be used with a variety of analog signals including RTD and thermocouple signal. Discuss about thermocouples and RTDs because this is very important topics and selection of thermocouples and RTD when you are going to select for the analog input modules. I will discuss about thermocouples and RTD including the difference between both of them. Thermocouple is temperature sensor which produces the small voltage which is temperature dependent. It consists of two different type of metals joined together at one end. When the junction of the two metal is heated or cooled, a voltage is created that can be linked back to the temperature. Two different metals in the sensor to produce a voltage that can be read to determine the local temperature. A thermocouple is a simple, healthy and cost-effective temperature sensor used in a wide range of temperature measurement processes. Thermocouples are manufactured in a variety of style such as thermocouple probes, thermocouple probes with connectors, transition joint thermocouple probes, infrared thermocouples, bare wire thermocouples or even just thermocouple wire. RTD this abbreviate for resistance temperature detector is a sensor whose resistance changes as its temperature changes. The resistance increases as the temperature of the sensor increases. An RTD is a passive device. It doesn't produce an output on its own. External electronic devices are used to measure the resistance of the sensor by passing a small electrical current through the sensor to generate a voltage. Typically 1 mA or less measuring current. 5 mA maximum without the risk of self-heating. RTD also called a resistance thermocouples. Different type of sensor available. RTD and thermocouple have different characteristics and required from a special purpose requirement. PLC have thermocouples and RTD modules available. RTD work on basic relationship between metals and temperatures. As the temperature of a metal increase, the metal resistance to the flow of electricity increase. Platinum is the most commonly used metal for RTD elements due to the number of factors. Copper, nickel and platinum are all popular metals used in the construction of RTD. It is more useful to compare the performance of RTD and thermocouple using specific qualities such as cost and temperature range so that user can choose based on the specific needs of their organization. In general, thermocouples are better than RTDs when it comes to cost, measurement, speed and the range of temperatures that can be measured using them. Most thermocouples cost 2.5 to 3 times less than RTDs and although RTD installation is cheaper than thermocouple installation. The saving in installation costs are not enough to tip the balance. Furthermore, thermocouples are designed to be more durable and react faster to changes in temperature because of that same design. Most RTDs are limited to maximum temperature of 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. In contrast, certain thermocouples can be used to measure up to 2700 degrees Fahrenheit. RTD are superior to thermocouples in that their reading are more accurate and more repeatable. Repeatable means that user reading the same temperature produce the same result over multiple trials. RTD producing more repeatable reading means that their reading are more stable while their design ensure that RTD continue producing stable reading longer than thermocouple. Furthermore, RTD receive more healthy signals and it is easier to cal calibrate. RTD reading to their design. 
both rtd and thermocouples are sensor used to measure heat in scale such as fahrenheit and kelvin in general thermocouples are cheaper more durable and can measure a bigger range of temperature while rtd produce better and more reliable measurement in the picture shown has two analog output channel these channels can be set up for either the minus 10 to plus 10 volt range or the 0 to 20 milliampere range the output resolution is 14 bits for the voltage range and 13 bits for the current range when a cpu send a numerical value to an analog output channels the analog modules convert the value to a voltage or current within the range set up for the output channel the channel is typically connected to an analog output devices that is controlling something in a machine or process such as motor speed wall position or temperature plc analog output signal modules vary in the number of output channels channel resolution and output signal types you can see in the picture 2s71200 signal modules status indicators with combination of digital input output signal modules and a combination analog input output signal modules signal modules have led status indicators that are useful for system installation monitoring and troubleshooting both modules have a status led for each channel the digital channel status led is green and turn on when the input or output is on the analog channel led is green when the channel has been configured and is active and red when there is a channel error both modules also have a diagnostic led that is green when the module is operational and red and when the module is defective or non operational i am trying my best to give you presentation to the point and all the topics are useful especially for students job seekers learner even though you can listen all topic during travels and in your spare times this is end of lecture please help to subscribe my channel thanks for watching